Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. We're going to look at dynamic media metadata in Adobe Premiere Pro. Okay, shout out to Matthew Morris who requested this metadata deep dive. Wanted to go through all the options in the project bin and what applies uh, to this project and to the clips. Now, metadata is a vast subject, and I'm just going to be touching on the options available through Dynamic Media and the Premiere Pro project metadata. There's lots more in there, uh, but we'll just concentrate on the stuff that's important to us video editors. All right, so in the project bin down here, if you click on the little flyout menu, you can go to metadata display. You can also right click on the header and choose metadata display and open that up. Now, what this will do is it will give us more options than what we see in the project panel. By default, these are the settings that are turned on. Things like label, frame rate, media start and duration, video in and out point. The ones that are checked are the ones that you'll see in the project bin down at the bottom. And you can even add your own property. So if something is missing, you click on add property, you give that a name, and then you give it a value. An integer means it's a whole number. A real value is a fractional number. Text is like comments where you can type a whole bunch of text. And Boolean is simply an on or off setting. And you can add that and you can save these settings and reuse them. So some are pretty obvious. You can't get rid of name. Name is the name of the clip of the title. You can turn label color on and off so you can see the labels down there in the bottom left. What is the frame rate, the media start and end time, the media duration, the video in and out point? Because remember, you can have a long video with a different in and out point. And, and all of these are, are sortable. So you can sort by the in and out point or the duration. I want to find everything that's, um, that's long first. So you could sort by that. And some of these that are off are things like the audio in and out duration, subclip start and subclip end, and subclip duration. I've got a whole tutorial on working with subclips. So if you like that and you need to see those values, you could turn those on. Video info is the information of the video and the information of the uh, the audio file. Video usage and audio usage. I've got a whole tutorial on uh, using this so that you can not use the same B-roll. It shows you how many times you've used a certain clip. Very useful. Now, some of these, when we get down here into things like tape name, uh, description, log note, these come from the days of capturing from tape. And tapes had numbers and that number would go, that tape number would, would be added to the clip. The clip came from the tape and all of this had to be coordinated together. And this is still used uh, a lot even though it's not tape, it's the master clip uh, name. So I don't use this at all from the clips that I have from my uh, Black Magic. Comment is that, it's a comment, a log note. Again, something like that. It's an editorial note that you would add. File path and, and file name. Premiere Pro can have a different file name on your desktop or your hard drive where the media is and a different name in the project bin. So this can have you ha show you both of those. If you change them in Premiere Pro, it doesn't change it in the desktop. If you change it in the desktop, it doesn't change it in Premiere Pro. Um, okay, so a little bit further. The proxy information, where's the proxy and what is the media file name? So those are good if you are using proxies. Capture settings. The word capture goes back to the days of tape. And if you're shooting with any of the tapeless media like anyone's had from the last 10 years, then you're not going to be using capture. Capture means you're sitting with a tape deck and you're controlling the ca the capture and it's all analog and no one's using that crap unless you're, you're doing this from old VHS tapes. So for there, you could use it. What's the status of a clip? This basically tells you if your media is online or offline. And the offline properties, uh, what is the format offline? So if you've got a clip that's missing, it's offline. It could, if you have this turned on, it, it, it'll show you it's missing in its audio or it's missing in its video. Um, scene information, where you can write the number of the scene, the number of the shot, the client name, whether something is good or bad. This is already turned on. So if you're sorting through things, you could just be clicking on a, a, uh, whether something is good or not. And whether you want to hide something, just get it out of view. Don't delete it, but hide it. 
Um, then there's content analysis. So if you've performed some sort of uh, analysis like stabilization, that would show up. Captions shows which captioning streams are present. So if you've, th this would be for captions that you've either generated yourself or you've imported. It shows you the kinds of streams that are available. Sound time code, sound rule. A lot of times on set in a professional environment, there's a master time code. And a lot of times it's the audio recording device that's generate. It's not only recording the audio, but it's generating the master time code that cameras are synced to. And this can, can if you turn it on, it will show you that master time code in the project bin. And, the, and what's the number of the sound roll? Same thing again, camera roll, if you've, uh, you're using things like that. Uh, and a lot of this data would be added manually. What's the daily roll, the lab roll, the key code? A lot of these won't really matter to most people. Um, it's just if you're, if someone is capturing that data and uh, they're bringing it in and, and maybe they're making uh, proxies or, or something and they're, they want that data to be on, on all of the clips. Uh, whether there's a sync offset that's been added sometimes with the recording, the audio and the video, there might be a sync offset um, value. What's the video codec? This one's really uh, good. If you're trying to sort by certain types, maybe you want to sort by H.264 at the bottom and all of your uh, high-end red footage at the top. What's the field order? This is only for interlaced footage. I doubt you're shooting any interlaced footage. This is where you have different uh, fields and it tells you the field order. It's either um, um, upper first or lower first. Proxy information, whether the proxy status, is it missing or is it found? Uh, is something selected? So you can use this to select a bunch of items. Whether the project is locked. Um, if you have a Creative Cloud for Teams account, then you can work with locked projects and share these. And here it can show you who has locked the project because someone else could be sharing the same project and they've locked it on there and you could see that name. Uh, this is for sharing color data. This is the American Society of Cinematographers uh, CDL information. And there's two. Uh, the first one is Slope offset and power, that's the SOP, and the SAT is saturation information. So with those turned on, it would show you that CDL information uh, in that list. Uh, this is for people that maybe on set, they use something to do a quick grade and they want that information to pass all the way along until the final grade. Okay, there's lots and lot one and lot two uh, information to show you if you have uh, using the, um, if you've applied any LUTs. And then you can also have a show it original file name. Um, so let's, let's go turn uh, some of these on so that we'll see them. Uh, to me, I really love video usage so I can see that again down at the bottom. And I'll twirl this up and open up another one, which is dynamic media right down here. And the rest of these, a lot of these apply to other things like Acrobat or Photoshop. So here's the project reference, and you can twirl this down and look at the uh, type, so the file type and the path to that project reference. The video frame rate, uh, this shows you the size, whether uh, it's based, and you could show the width and the height, and what is the unit. So when you turn all of that on, we'll show you that in a second. What's the Pixel aspect ratio, most stuff today is square pixels, but uh, some older cameras, it's not. It's it's actually um, uh, narrower to fit more in, and then it's expanded on the way out. So you can turn that on to see it. What's the depth? Most of the stuff that people are shooting, especially YouTubers, is just 8-bit, uh, but this could show you if you're using 12, 10, or 10 bit or more. What's the video color space? So this might be useful for people who want to see if they're shooting something like uh, RG, sRGB or Rec. 709 or uh, 2020. What is the alpha mode and what is the alpha pre-multiplied color? I'm going to have a future tutorial about uh, exporting alphas, but that would show you uh, that information. The video alpha unity transparency, whether it's clear or false. The video compressor, what is it, what type of compressor? Is there a gamma curve uh, on this? What's the white balance color temperature? Not all video clips are going to have this information. What's the field order and the pull down? 
That again has to do uh, with uh, 432 pull down, usually from film going from 24 to 29.97. Audio sample rate, sample type, channel type and compressor. All of these are, are based on, on the type of compressor that's used for that uh, particular audio file. What's the sample rate? Is this 16-bit, uh, 24-bit, that kind of thing? Uh, what's the compressor? What is the codec that was used, MP3 or WAV? What's the speaker placement? So if this is 5.1, it might show which uh, speaker placement of where things are. File data rate in megabytes. The tape name, so again, this is similar to what you saw in the Premiere setting at the top. Alternate tape name, starting time code. Um, you can have a different time code than the starting time code. So in Premiere Pro, you could have something uh, starting at zero, but actually the time code was uh, an hour later. Uh, alternate time codes, what's the duration? Again, the same kind of stuff as you saw in the Premiere Pro project settings, scene, shot, shot number, date, shot location, uh, and the log comment. Also peak information here for audio, what is the absolute peak audio file and the relative peak path, video modification date, audio modification date, uh, metadata modification date. So if there are changes in here, you can, you can have that turned on. And here's more for music. If these were set, if they're not set, you're not going to see a lot of these. Uh, things like artist, album, track, genre, uh, release date. So a lot of MP3 style uh, metadata. Is the engineer, is it part of a compilation? Does it have lyrics attached? What's the disc number, tempo, instrument, time? Tempo would actually be a good one if you're doing stuff and cutting to music um, and, and you wanna know what the beats per minute are that might be useful to use because you could do the math between seconds and beats per minute and cuts to actually cut things uh, correctly. Um, again, things like instrument, probably not gonna see that. Intro time, out cue, relative, and loop, whether this is looped, the number of beats. Again, a lot of these are not gonna apply. They're strictly, they're probably, they're gonna be more useful if you're doing things in Adobe Audition, actually. Uh, time signature and what's the scale, again, Comment was the same thing. Uh, which take number? This might be very useful to an editor um, because they might get notes back from someone asking for, uh, please try take number five. And if you're just looking at a file number and you don't know what the take number is, um, it might be useful to have that checked, but also have that number attached to the clip too. Um, okay, so let, let's turn that on and, and we'll see it show up. Uh, project name, director, camera label. I mean, these are all pretty standard stuff. Uh, shot size, this is the uh, scale of the shot for framing if you've reframed it or changed that value. Which camera angle is this? You can have information for that and the day of the shoot. So with me clicking OK, those values show up. You probably don't see them because this is a very small project window. I'm going to make this larger by tapping the tilde key on a North American keyboard just to make it uh, larger. You can see there's our, our settings for things like um, media start and end, duration, and you can drag these around too. So, um, so there's our frame rate. Very useful to see all of that information. Um, audio info, video usage. So if I open up this particular one, you'll see all of the video usage show up here and where it's being used. Here's the tape name. This was actually uh, shot where the tape name information was all set on there. And now let's just start moving over to the right. And you can see there's the status. It's all online, whether it's good or high. There's a take number. There's the video frame rate. So, and you can see some of it's, it's not showing over here. Um, what is the height, the unit, and the width of that particular um, clip? So some of that data, like I said, shows up, some of it doesn't. If it doesn't, you could actually uh, type information in here. So if I knew that this was uh, take number one, I could click in there and type the number one and sort that information. So there's lots of ways uh, to work with metadata in Adobe Premiere Pro. I have a whole other tutorial uh, that talks about the link of metadata for the project and metadata to the clip and how to link those together. But it is all very useful information and can really help 
in house cleaning, especially when you have a very big project. So thank you to Matthew Morris for requesting this. I hope this is the kind of uh, information you wanted. Lots of ways to use this metadata and uh, Hopefully, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, you'll take a moment and subscribe. If you want to support us some more, then uh, you can join us through PayPal. There's a link in the description and on the front of the channel. You can donate once or monthly like our many wonderful PayPal supporters. We love them. If you want to be notified of future tutorials, you got to remember to ring the bell and you'll be notified. We do output a new tutorial every single week and that they're all new, many are requested as this one was by our viewers. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to get you looking.